the 2020s will be well remembered for lockdowns and quarantines and governments telling us all to stay indoors and avoid people as much as possible. Now, if this was an interesting time to be an introvert, let me tell you. So when Mythology with Mike asked me if I wanted to do a collab about saints, first of all, the answer is, well, heck yeah. And second of all, there is only one dude that I can cover, given the recent events of things. A guy who was social distancing way before it was cool and even took it to the next level. So, ladies and gents, let's talk about Simeon Stylight. Isolate that like button if you enjoy this tale of one of my favourite dudes from church history. Simeon was born in what is now Turkey in around the year 390-ish CE. About a decade earlier, Christianity had become the official religion of the Roman Empire. At a young age, Simeon explored Christianity, and then he got really into it. Like, really into it. I mean, you think you might be into that show on Netflix, but he was the level of into it that he'd be able to tell you the name of the showrunner's cat and when its birth it was. Yeah, he was really into it. At about 16 years old, he went to the place where all the Christians that were super serious about their faith went to, which was a monastery. And from the outset, he was all in. And to paraphrase Jack Black from School of Rock, you are not hardcore until you live hardcore. And Simeon was way hardcore. Now, monasteries are places where you can get away from the evils and temptations of the world and concentrate on your faith in a controlled environment. But Simeon soon proved that he was too extreme for people who had literally left all of society behind, got rid of all their possessions just to pursue a holy life. He was so intense in his devotion that the monastery actually had to ask him to leave on account that he wasn't really being part of the monastic community. So Simeon said, fine, I'll make my own monastery with no beer, nuns or food and left. And he was true to his word because after this, he found himself a little hut and locked himself in it. And instead of giving up chocolate or beer for Lent, he gave up, well, everything except breathing. Well, God must have listened to his prayer because he actually exited that hut after Lent and he was fine and quite rightly people thought that that was a bit of a miracle. But Simeon was not done, however. Next up, Simeon got into purifying himself in a new way by standing up as long as he humanly could and would combine this with now not consuming anything over Lent. A few years went by and he began to tire of his hut and he really wanted to get away from it all, so he decided to set off to somewhere even more remote than a little shack outside of town, so he set off to the mountains, where he set up shop in a small enclosed space. However, at this point, his reputation had started to precede him, and people had heard of the holy man who lived on the mountain. So naturally, people were going to go and climb this mountain to go and ask him questions of faith and ask for his prayers, since a dude this hardcore must surely have A, the answers, and B, the ear of the creator. But Simeon's deal was to get away from the world, to get away from people and temptation. And now people and temptation were climbing up the mountain that he was up to pester him during his prayer and devotion. Simeon needed a solution to this problem, so he wandered around for a bit and one day spotted the answer in an old ruined building. One of the old pillars from the building had survived and there was still some of the roof left on it. There it stood, and it was about three metres tall, that's ten foot, and it was all isolated. Now, his whole deal is to distance himself, so what better way than just, like, distance yourself from the world by not living on it at all? So, Simeon set up shop, and thus gained himself the moniker that made him famous, Simeon Stylite. Local lads would climb the pillar and provide him with food as their good deed for the day, or fill up the bucket that he would lower down occasionally. However, the thing that annoyed him about living on a mountain would repeat itself. Pilgrims were still coming to see this holy man, except they were now coming to see the holy man on the pillar instead of the holy man on the mountain. Of course, it wasn't just the common folk that were interested in him. Some of his fellow Christians were all wondering if he was the real deal or he was just an act. And some well-known elders of monastic Christianity came to come and see him. Now, these guys reasoned that a true man of God would come down to meet his peers to converse with them. And if not, he'd probably got something to hide up there. So they ordered him to come down from the pillar. Simeon agreed and bowed to the authority of his elders. But before his feet touched the ground, the elders said, Look, Simeon, you've proved yourself. Uh, you've proved your humility. We're going to leave you to it. Continue your devotions. You're the real deal. 
So Simeon stayed on his pillar, uh, and it was not the only one that he lived on. People were still coming to see him to ask questions and request prayers, so he made the decision to make the most of all this attention that he garnered, since he'd now got, unwittingly, a following of sorts. So Simeon began to preach to the crowds gathered below, teaching them about how to stay away from profanity and usury, and strangely, while he himself was hardcore, he was not expecting any of his listeners to be and told them to be compassionate, to avoid being fanatics, and generally, just be cool, guys. In order to concentrate on his devotions, he decided to set up some office hours where people could come up to him via a ladder and ask him the questions they wanted to ask. And he even wrote a few letters to his ever-growing following. Whenever crowds got too big or too intense, he would re relocate himself to another one of these pillars, usually a taller one than the last time. The last of these pillars that he lived on was 15 metres tall, that's 50 feet, with crowds getting so intense that eventually a series of walls had to be built around the pillar to protect it. Being the hardcore dude that he was, Simeon lived on top of a pillar of some sort for about 37 years. Even when he was ill, he would not leave his perch and his fame caused him to converse with emperors and he would send letters that would be read in important church councils. However, on the 2nd of September, 459 CE, one of his followers realised that he'd been in prostrating prayer for far too long and went up there to check on him and discovered that he'd passed away in prayer. He received a grand funeral attended by the many members of the clergy and he was buried not too far from the pillar that he'd lived on. The pillar still does exist today, although sadly in 2016, a missile devastated the area it stood in. And after his death, many a believer followed in his example for at least a century afterward. Here then ends the tale of Simeon Stylite then, a guy so all in for his cause that he isolated himself from the entire world for decades. And here's me moaning about the fact that I got stuck indoors for 10 days and there was nothing on Netflix. It makes you think, doesn't it? This guy, of course, is but one of the saints in this collab. So on screen, I've got another saint for you to look at, courtesy of Mythology with Mike. So go check that out. I think he's doing St. Nicholas. Anyway, until next time, Go grab yourself a nice socially distanced drink, keep asking questions, and I'll see you all soon.